ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أأنبئكم بخير من ذلكم للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير بالعباد أعوذ بالله سمينا لمن الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على حبيبه الكريم سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises are due to Allah the Lord of the world We besiege his peace and mercy and blessings uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be showered upon our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household companions, and all believers in the day of accountability. Today, inshallah, we we'll welcome you um, to our tafsir um, discussion. Uh, inshallah, we shall be taking the exegesis of the Holy Quran, that is the tafsir of the Quran. And um, inshallah, the verses we are focusing upon, the area we are focusing upon in the Holy Quran is um, Surah 2 Al Imran, verses um, 14 to 15. And um, these verses basically is practically talking to us as hu human being, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing to us some of our nature, and um, by that, using that to direct how to monitor that nature for a beneficial um, consequences, for beneficial um, results and reward, so that such will not basically uh, drag us into some kind of a mess in this life and the life to come. Inshallah, as I've said earlier on, we'll be taking those verses from Surah to Ali Moran, verses 14 to 15. And I will um, take some of this um, recitation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahi rahman rahim Zuhina lin nasi hubbu shawati minan nisa'i wal banin والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرث ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أنبئكم بخير من ذلك للذين تقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير بالعباد. When we look at these two verses, Allah سبحانه وتعالى says: "زوجنا للناس حب الشوات." Beautified for men is the love of things they coveted, including women, children. Qanatir, 
el mukontoro of gold and silver branded beautiful horses mosawama cattle and fertile land this is a player of the present world's life but allah has the excellent return with him verse 6, 15 shall i inform you of things far better than those for those who have taqwa there are gardens that is paradise with their lord underneath which rivers flow therein is their eternal home and as wajumotohara these are purified mates or wives and allah will be pleased with them and allah is all seer of the servants these are the two verses we basically want to um, go into um, using the ambience of the tafsir uh, when we look at these verses in the comment of Abun uh, Kasir, may Allah be pleased with him. He has basically titled these two verses as the true value of this earthly life. Abun Kasir titled it as the true value of this earthly life. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the delights that he put in this life for people such as women and children. And when we look at this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse 14, Allah says, Zujina li nasi hubbu shahwat. That it has, been, it has been adorned, it has been embellished, it has been beautified for men. These things that were mentioned. Number one, hubbu shahwat. The love of things um, things like the shahwat these are the, the passion the desire the lust it is ingrained in man to have love towards that meaning this this lust this enjoyment these things they covet includes women and children and also heaps you know large amount of gold and silver here represents wealth as well these are things that are you know um, attracting attractive to mankind by human nature even to be in a submission he said let us look at this verse itself. Zuyinelinas. It has been beautified for men. Who is the beautifier here? Who beautify this object we talk about? This loss, this desire that we have, the love that we have for children, for women, you no, know, for material things around us. Who beautify it? Two opinions have been put forward by scholars the first one is the view that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the beautifier that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwal muzayyin that allah is the one that beautify these things that we have talked about for mankind another group of scholars says it is shaitan that have beautified these things for humanity you know, he, he, he embellishes it. It makes it, even if that thing is, um, I mean, not having a value, even if that thing is a scrap, Shaitan beautifies it such that it looks attractive to you and you want to, you know, grab it, you want to move closer, you want to surround yourself with such those materials. So that's, these are the two opinions with Islamic scholars as said by Imam Qurtubi, uh, in his tafsir. And, but when we look at that, these two opinions, the first one talking about the view 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has created and beautified those things for men. There is an angle of explanation from um, scholars regarding that, that Allah's beautification of these objects occurred by cre is the creation of those things, by the preparing of those things but for beneficial ends, for beneficial needs, you know, for positive things. And creating the nature and desire in men, you know, to cling towards these things, to have love towards these things. So it is by Allah's design, by his creation, you know, from creating humanity, humankind in his nature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ingrained in his nature while creating mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a man. He has tempered his nature to naturally have inclination, love towards these things. And for what? To gain, to have rewards, to benefit positively from these things. This is the, the first angle regarding Allah being the beautifier. The second angle, which says um, the beautifier is um, shaitan. That is the beautification of shaitan occur through the whispering of shaitan, through his deceitful uh, machination, you know, to take control of the heart of men, the soul of men, the culp of man, you know, to direct it. Then, you know, beautifying it, beautifying evil for man such that you, you, you like evil. These objects that Allah SWT has mentioned in these verses, you now love to acquire them and you don't mind whatever means through which you acquire them. It could be through haram, it could be through fornication, it, it could be um, gathering interest, usury, it could be through corruption, through bribery, through corruption, through betting, through alcohol, you know, through boyfriending, girlfriending. You want to acquire, gain this lust, this desire, this passion. And you will prefer, for instance, you prefer fornication to nikah, getting married. The akadu nikah, you prefer fornication. You, could, you feel okay with concubines. So the, uh, the second opinion views it as the machination of shaitan to try and take control of the heart of men by deceiving them and beautifying those things around for them. Like in one of the hadiths of the Prophet وسلم, that when a man sees a woman for instance, coming up, I mean an oncoming woman, shaitan beautifies that woman. Even, even if that woman is that ugly, shaitan beautifies it, beautifies the cloth. The cloth start dangling, draping, dropping, and you are attracted to, towards that. That is the machination of shaitan. So this is one of the ways that shaitan catches the heart of his, um, um, uh, you know, his targets, his, his victims. So, and when we look at this, Imam Qurtubi, rahimullah, said the verse, when we look at this verse, from the two angles that we have mentioned, is a sort of admonition to mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling our attention. Allah is admonishing us. At the same time, admonition in the sense that um, these shahwat, these um, desires, this loss, this enjoyment that we're talking about, it is in your nature, then you need to control it. It's an admonition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, don't allow that passion, that lust, that desire, you know, to take hold of you and take full control. No, you are in charge. You need to take control. You need to regulate yourself, regulate your nature, temper your nature in accordance with the dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the Islamic scholars actually pointed out a very salient point here. That it is not really that um, this object that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here, it is not really that we need to look at them with some disdain, with some absurd, 
with some hateful view. No. These things in, in themselves are good. Allah mentioned here shahwat of women. It is not that that object, that creature, woman, womanhood, Allah SWT is calling our attention not to hate a woman, not to regard woman as an evil. Wolbanin, not to look at your children as evil, not to look at the material things of this world. You have cars, you have buildings, you have clothing, you have jewelries, not to look at them at, as evil. These are things that have been created for us in life. It is how you relate. We relate with them. To what end do we channel them to? This will really describe what will be our position before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we look at this verse as well, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, made us understand. Uh, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has basically put forth the women. When he's talking about the hubbu shawat, Allah placed the women first. Why have Allah, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place the women first? Allah says, meaning nisa that it has been ingrained in human nature, the love for the shawat of women. Then it said the shawat of children. Then the shawat of konathir, heaps of gold and silver. Why was women mentioned first? There is an answer. The answer basically is because uh, The fitna from women is more emphatic, more intense. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَا تَرَقْتُ بَعْدِ فِتْنَةً أَشَادُ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ مِنَ النَّسَاء I have not, I have not left any trial or calamity. More intense for men after me, than the women, than the women folk. This, the, Allah starts that because of the fitna that comes from women is um, more intense, more challenging. The first one is because through women, you have certain challenge that could come in if the woman is not um, applying what is practicable, available, practically available in the Quran and the Sunnah. And in that order, because of two reasons, if that woman is not having that quality, then these two reasons will prevail over her. And that is the two reasons why women's challenge is more intense, more challenging for men than any other uh, fitan as mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse. And more importantly, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed women folk first uh, before all other desires and um, enjoyment of this world and um, lust of this world. The first reason is because commitment to women. You know, look at that verse. It is, you love women. And when that love for women, woman, a woman is not controlled. Control, number one, through putting the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ahead, putting the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ahead of that of the love of your woman, then it derails one. And when you are that committed to that um, personality, 
then it can lead to number one rahim. it can lead to breaking of family ties it can lead to breaking of family ties because because you are in love with her and you have been under this trial of her love what she wants you want to satisfy her she commands you obey she gives instructions you follow she gives direction you attend to so which could lead to cutting rahim the the breaking of family ties we have seen through your the love commitment of some men those their wives to women it made them cut relationship with their mothers it you know turn a whole family you know a well cemented family into what you know into an emptiness into an emptiness because of this kind of um, commitment that is one of the um, the reason uh, why um, the challenge of women is greater, more intense, more emphatic than all others. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu liyastadhinkum alladheena malakat aymanukum walladheena lam yablughu alhuluma minkum walladheena lam yablughu alhuluma minkum thalatha marrat من قبل صلاة الفجر وحين تضعون ثيابكم من الظهيرة ومن بعد صلاة العشاء ثلاث عورات لكم ليس عليكم ولا عليهم جناح بعدهم طوافون عليكم بعضكم على بعض Number two, the second reason why the challenge of women is more intense. Yubtala bijamil mal min al halal wal haram. Commitment to women, one could be put under the trial of you know amassing wealth because want to satisfy her. She needs the latest bag, women bag, she needs the latest ring, she needs the finest wristwatch, she needs the car, she needs in your apartment, she needs this, she needs that, she needs the latest apparel. So you want to satisfy her. Even in good things, even in good things, she wants her child or children to go to the best schools of this world. She wants them to have the best socks, the best sandals. And because you don't want to, you want to be submissive, you want to be committed to her. You don't want any bruise with her. You don't want any friction with her. So you need to satisfy her. You don't want to come back home and give her excuses. But you cannot meet up with the financial commitment. So you will not bother. From whatever source you get this phone, this money, you need to just acquire them. Even if it's true, aiding and abetting crime, getting involved in corruption in your offices, um, through getting involved in um, businesses or investments that are antithetical to the principle of the Sharia. And this other, I mean, user interest based um, businesses and um, investment. You won't bother because the love that you are committed to is in the highest of degrees. And you don't want to lose it, even a shred of that. You don't want to miss it. So that's why you will not bother. So that's why the trial, the fitna that men get from women, that's why it's more intense and more emphatic. And that's why scholar, Allah SWT has placed it first. Allah says, 
Why was Allah mentioned? Why is Allah mentioning the woman first? It is because of these two reasons that we have brought forth. And when we basically look at it, it it's, that is the reality. That is the reality. And the second one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, Banin and your children. Yes. We are um, easily given to uh, commitment to our children. Number one, we are com commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be concerned about them. But scholar says the degree of commitment to children is not up to that influence of the woman. And they said, final fitna fi him wahida wa wa ma ubutuliya bi jam'il mal li ajlihim. For children, for your children, basically it's for one reason. Out of the two reasons that were brought forth earlier on for women, it is just one that, you know, basically fits in for children here. Yeah. And that is, you want to satisfy them, it involves gathering fund from whatever source. You want to satisfy your children in this place, you need to go to Domino, you need to go to here, you need to go to Atris, you need to buy this for them, you need to satisfy them at all costs. And you'll be pushed. You, you, you have the pressure till you are pushed into haram things. So that's why Allah SWT has um, described the ver I mean, in, the, in describing the nature of man, Allah says, Zuyina linas, hubbu shahwat min al nisa, wal banin, wal qanatiri al muqantara. That it has been um, beautified for men is the love of things. They covet women, children. Heaps of gold and silver, branded horses, cattle, and fertile land. This is the pleasure of the present life, world's life. But Allah has the excellent return with Him. When we look at um, the nature of man, another area about regarding the nature of man is the fact that. Humanity prefers the easy way most, mostly. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu has told us in one of the hadiths um, where he said, Hufati uh, lijanna bil makari wa hufati nar bil shahwat. That the paradise have been, you know, have been covered, embellished. Bil Makari, with those things we dislike, those things you don't want to get involved in, those things that you consider too hard, difficult, challenging, unappealing to your nature, to human nature. This is what paradise is covered with. However, the fire, the Jahannam of this world, may Allah SWT save us from hell has been covered, embellished with shawat, with this lust, these desires, this embellishment, these ornaments that we have in this world. It, you know, it easily attracts, it, 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 it invites, and you get, you know, you get locked in. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Tariqul Jannah has noon bi rabwa wa tariqul nar sa'lum bi sahwa. The Prophet said, the path to paradise is rough on the high land. You know, the, the path to paradise, it's a roughly coercive, coarse road, root, root that is not plain, it's not smooth. You have a lot of obstacles, hilly, it's hilly. So that's the path to paradise. In addition to that, it's on an upland. So you can imagine the challenge of, if, if you are moving on a rough road that is straight, I mean, you could, you know, you could endure the challenge of moving through it. But added to that, as a, the, the, the fact that it is crooked, added to that, it is an upland. So you have double challenge, you know, that would draws you, draws you back from attaining that height, 
of going to paradise. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu is trying to, you know, um, gra gra graphically paid for us. That Tariq al has no berobwa. It is a coarse hilly on a upland. The, the, the path to paradise. It is coarse, rough, hilly place. Wa Tariq al-Nar, sahlum bi sahwa. However, the path to hell, to fire, may Allah SWT save us from hellfire. The path to hell, to fire, is Sahel, a place that is, you know, soft, plain, not rocky, no upland there. So you just move. That is the path to hell. So that's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is using this verse to call our attention to the fact that for going to paradise, for one to attain paradise, it requires some effort. It requires effort. And this effort is placed on our compliance with the Kitab wa Sunnah, with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in addition to this, when you look at the other con content that Allah SWT mentioned in this verse, in verse 14, Allah mentioned women, he mentioned children, he mentioned heaps of gold and silver, then he mentioned al-khayl al-musawwama, he mentioned the horses, the branded horses. Wal an'am, he mentioned the cattle, then wal harf, the fertile land, this is agriculture. These things entice mankind. Allah now says, ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا These are only enjoyment of this world. These are only embellishment of this world, which will cease to exist. It will cease to exist. The next verse, Allah says, قُلْ أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرِ مِنْ ذَلِكُمْ Tell them, Muhammad, shall I inform you of things far better than those? Things that are far better than those. What are those things that are far better than those? This is fearing Allah. لِلَّذِينَ تَقُوا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتِ For those that basically have piety in their Lord, it will be for them paradise beneath which rivers flow. They will stay there, perpetuate there forever. And they will have azwaju mutalhara purified wives, mates, and in addition to that, they will have the pleasure of their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these two verses, the last verse basically shows us that for us to attain the pleasure of our Lord, we need to get engaged in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us so that we leave the lust, the desire, not to take us away from the path of gaining or earning the pleasure of our Lord. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beneficial for us and make it easy for us to um, live in compliance with his dictates and make it easy for us as well to be able to control our passion, our desires, such that it will not lead us into any form of destruction in this life and the life to come. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله